my name is Dave Frank. Welcome to my 21st Internet Masterclass. Tonight I'm excited to offer you a class I'm calling Using the 15 Stylistic Elements Plus a Few More. This class is a spin-off of the class 15 Stylistic Elements for the Advanced Jazz Pianist, which has for some reason become my most popular class on YouTube. Tonight I will review the 15 elements, present eight new elements for your consideration, and create a series of improv flows during which time I'll allow the elements to arrange themselves in, hopefully, a logical musical order. I'll identify the elements as they occur with a screen visual so you can follow the flow of ideas. We're coming to you tonight live from Hari NYC in the heart of New York City. We have a bit of a humid summer night, good for some hot playing. A stylistic element is defined as any repeated patterning of notes occurring in two or more measures during an improvisation. All of tonight I'll be improvising over A-T-T-Y-A, all the things you are. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome. Let's do a quick review of the basic 15 elements that were discussed in the 15 elements class. For a thorough explanation of the elements, check out the class on YouTube at the address on the screen. There's a zero dollar cover charge and a no drink minimum. The first element is called the doorknob in the left hand. We outline the chords in a certain kind of a pattern. I'll try a little improv. It splits the left hand. That's the doorknob. The second element we'll call the chorale, which splits the left hand in a different way. With a little improv. The third we call an umpa, which is a little bit of a traditional kind of left hand split where we play one note at the bottom and then the chord on top. Umpa. Another left hand style we call comping in the cracks. Our next left hand style is called four to the bar. Next we'll improvise in the left hand. This is called left hand blow. Next we'll improvise with two hands together. We'll call this the octave blow. Next, we'll improvise two different lines at the same time and call it contrapuntal improvising.
Our next left hand pattern will be repetitive comping rhythms. We'll try double arpeggios, which are arpeggios a tenth apart. Our next element we call faux stride, F-O-U-X stride. It's like stride, but it's fake. A rodeo. We'll try some slurs in the right hand, which goes like this. Next, we'll trade fours between the hands. Ha ha, cheated a little bit at the end there. And our last element from the first class is right hand and left hand in unison. That's a quick wrap up of the first 15 elements we studied in our first class. The idea when you're playing is to shift these elements as they occur naturally. There might be more things that happen besides just these elements, but it's nice to have some basic ideas in mind when setting out to do an improv flow. Our first new element will be playing a bass line on the second and fourth beat of every measure. This throws the audience off a little bit, and sometimes that's a good thing. Usually a bass line, of course, is played on every beat, If you wanted to play a half-time bass line, you can usually put it on the first and third beats. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. If you try the same thing on beats two and four, it sounds really nutty. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Crazy man. Our next new element will be a pedal point, which we'll do in split octaves in the left hand. This is a great element to use when you come upon a new key and hang out in it for a while. Not yet. Here. Again.
Next, we're going to shift time signatures. This is a really, really neat element. I love this. We're going to start, as usual, in 4-4, four, four, but we're going to switch sometimes to 3-4 and sometimes to 5-4. You can randomly switch whenever you feel get that signal. To switch time signatures, you can do it and go from 4-4 four, four into 3-4, back to 4-4, four, four, from 4-4 four, four into 5-4, to 3-4, to 4-4. Four, four. There's always a 4 on the bottom. <laughs> so this is an example of playing in 3-4. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And five, four would go like this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. That's a nice pattern for five, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. If we want to switch between 4-4 four, four and 3-4, it'll sound something like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. If we want to switch between 4-4 four, four and 5-4, it might go something like this. One, two, three, four, 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 one. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, four, yeah. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now we're going to mix all the time signatures up, and we're going to play someplace in between 4-4, four, 3-4, four, four, and 5-4. Time is very elastic. It's like a rubber band. You can stretch it here. You can bring it back to an unstretched position. You can stretch it out wider. It's really very elastic. It's amazing. I think Einstein was right. Our next element is what we can call ghost notes. Usually we want to articulate all the notes of a phrase as we improvise. But with ghost notes, it's almost like you're writing something in pencil and you're partially erasing a word here and there. So it sounds a little bit mysterious. You're not showing the audience all your cards, all your notes at the same time. Some of the notes are ghosted, so it has a kind of an interesting sound to it. A little modern, I think. 
a little bit like modern art where you're not exactly drawing a cat, but you're drawing a cat, but maybe the whiskers are here and the tail is up here. It takes a minute to figure out what it is, but it's an interesting technique. This is an example of some ghost notes in a right hand phrase. That is creepy. Next, we're going to use some funny phrases, which are minor second intervals with the melody on top. Great for comic relief. Ha ha. Ha ha. You can do that when you're improvising sometimes. Aha, it's like a cartoon. Okay, we got three more. One is the shake, where we shake the chord in the right hand. This would kind of be a climactic kind of a thing. Yeah, shake. Next is a very important element in the left hand, which we call a two-level left hand. It's similar to a faux stride, but it's a little more regular in its execution. In the two level left hand, we have some kind of figure going on down about here, and we have a chord up here, and it will be done in a kind of a regular direct rhythm. Try a little bit more of that. You can put any kind of figure you want down low and put a chord up here. Really opens up the whole keyboard. Our last new element is what I call a smash chord, and that's a chord you play in the right hand and you do a glissando at the end to give it some dramatic effect. Ah, uh -huh. The glissando is best done with an open hand, kind of done in this, these two fingers in the middle. You can also try it on the nails if you turn the hand over. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah. Ha ha, that's wild. Now we come to the highlight of our show. I shall attempt the death-defying feat of creating a few improv flows on the changes of A-T-T-Y-A and allow the 23 elements to come forth as they will to arrange themselves in any way that feels right to whoever the hell is responsible for the process of jazz improvisation. Many a man has perished in such an attempt. You should consider removing any small domesticated animals or impressionable children from the room during this demonstration. I shall not limit myself to the aforementioned 23 elements, but invite them to appear as they deem fit. Ah. Uh -huh.
I'd like to thank you for joining me this evening. Presumably you had nothing else better to do. As always, I'd like to thank the magnificent Melissa Kelly for her work filming and editing these classes. And please feel free to enjoy 20 classes currently on YouTube and Ustream, free for any time viewing. The classes include a walking baseline clinic, Bill Evans, playing outside the changes, beginning improvisation using modal vamps, Oscar Peterson, Lenny Tristano, ear training, The Grateful Dead, an afternoon with Dick Hyman, and many more. If you have any questions, comments, complaints, or tomatoes, you may contact me directly at my website, www.davefrankjazz.com. Blessings and keep swinging from 30th Street.